So now underline Mauna. M O U N E, Mauna. In brackets, silence. Some people, again, they misunderstand silence. They think silence means simply not speaking. That is not the right understanding, my dear friends. Silence means you are not speaking anything, number one. Your mouth is shut all the time. And number two, your awareness is diverted inwards, not outwards. Number two, your awareness is always into going inwards, not outwards, number two. And number three, you practice mindfulness. The practice of silence without mindfulness is not a silence at all. Some people, they don't speak, but they watch their mobile. They reply to the WhatsApp messages. They reply to emails. And they watch sometimes movies also. What kind of silence is that? That is not silence. Silence, the right way of following the silence. Write down point number one. The right way to follow the silence is any particular day. You can choose any one particular day per week minimum. And that particular day, you should be digitally detoxed. That means no digital gadgets around you. Your mobile phones, your iPads, whatever is off for that one particular day. The day you are practicing Mauna, that day your internet Wi-Fi should be switched off, your mobile phone should be switched off. You inform your family members, you inform your friends, colleagues that on this particular day, I'm not available. I'm only available to myself. Underline, I'm only available to myself. That should be your attitude. So digitally detoxed. So that is the first step. I am available only to myself. I am not available to the outside world. So switching off your mobiles. Switch off your outside connections. Don't read emails on that day. Don't read WhatsApp messages. Switch off your phone for one day, 24 hours. You should be digitally detoxed. One day, that is a point number one. Now we are discussing how to follow silence, mauna. And practice of mauna is a very essential step in our enlightenment journey. Without silence, enlightenment is not possible. So first, let us understand what is silence. The first step is digital detox. In the brackets, I am available only to myself. The second point, practice of mindfulness. When you're taking shower, mindfully take shower. Enjoy the shower. Feel the water drops touching your skin and cleansing your aura. Be totally mindful of that bathing process. When you're eating food, you are mindfully eating food. When you're cutting vegetables, you are mindfully cutting vegetables. That means you're only cutting vegetables. You're not thinking anything else. When you are walking, you are mindfully walking. Your focus is only on the walking process and you are enjoying the nature. No thinking. Mindfulness simply means your body and mind, they both are in one place. Your body and mind, they both are in one place. That is mindfulness. Whatever you do, your focus is always in that action. Your awareness is in that action. Your mind is in that action. That is mindfulness. Very simple. And when you are, for example, you are cutting the vegetables or you are walking, you are doing some work. And if your focus is going somewhere else, you are thinking about the past. Use your breath to come back to the present moment. Bring your awareness back to the breath. When you bring your awareness back to the breath, you come to the present moment because breath is happening in the present moment. So when you bring your awareness back to the present moment, you become mindful naturally. So in the practice of mindfulness, the key point to remember is whenever you are distracted by your thoughts, bring your awareness to your breath and very naturally you become mindful. So practice of mindfulness is very, very important. And number three, 
the day you practice mauna on that day you be on fruits and juices so that you get the maximum benefit on that one particular day eat varieties of fruits take juices but avoid the cooked food the masala food and all the cooked food you avoid be on the food of the nature uncooked food preferably fruits and juices one day and the most important point is drink lot of water 300 ml every time you drink water it should be 300 ml minimum and on that given day you should drink at least six times water minimum six times between one glass of a juice and another glass of a juice there should be a glass of water when you are eating fruits the next time you eat a fruit the gap in the gap there should be water so that means you cannot eat fruits after fruits without drinking water in between if you are eating fruits in the morning 10 o'clock and the next you are trying to drink a juice at 12 o'clock you cannot drink juice directly you should drink water first and then go for the juices so you should have a frequent intake of water whatever the food you consume before you consume the next food there should be water suppose you decide to be on liquid diet you are taking juices between one glass of a juice and another glass of a juice there should be 300 ml water so in that way you make sure you are drinking at least 6 to 8 glasses of water and read spiritual books you will notice the difference when you are practicing mauna and when you read spiritual books your absorption the the content you absorb is on a different level when you are reading the book on a normal day and when you are reading the book on a day you practice mauna your intellect is sharp the the essence you absorb is to the highest quality whatever you read it the, your soul absorbs it your soul absorbs it the most efficient way you can experiment it so reading right spiritual books drinking plenty of water and to be on the fruits and juices on that day and practicing mindfulness and digital detox these are the five things you should follow and then on then you can do it it's very simple you can do it wherever you are of course sometimes it is challenging when you have kids when you have some small children when you have too many responsibilities and when you constantly need to interact with your family members do your best you will definitely get the benefit and we have built this ashram specifically for this purpose this ashram is meant to be the international center for mauna dhyan for silence meditation if you feel that i cannot be 100% efficient in my mauna practice come to this ashram this ashram is open for everybody and you don't need to pay a single penny everything is free here food is taken care your accommodation is very much rationalized and if you cannot afford an accommodation we are willing to give it for free money should not be a hindrance for you to come to this ashram if you cannot afford even accommodation we are giving it as gift we have pyramids here markaba here nature thousands of trees crystal six tons of crystals we have kept in the markaba you can hear the birds you can see all varieties of beautiful birds and animals coming and singing for you you feel that the bird has specifically come to you to heal you you can see beautiful snakes crawling its own way without disturbing you you can feel the blessing of the nature you can feel the trees speaking with you 
you can hug all the trees and the trees heal you emotionally. The moment you hug a tree, you feel a lot of healing. Emotionally, you feel cleansed. You feel vibrant. So we have three pyramids. One 36 by 36 feet pyramid on the lower level. And on the mid level, where you climb a small hill, then you have a Merkaba pyramid. Then on the top level, where you have a 45 by 45 feet pyramid, you can see the sunrise, you can see the sunset. There is a lake, water bodies. This is the best place on the planet Earth where you can practice silence. Every month on full moon and new moon, Amavasya and Purnami, there will be special retreats which will be conducted here in this ashram. You can best utilize it and it's absolutely free of cost. The retreat is a free of cost. We are making it free, not because of marketing. We are making it free because we want to maintain this ashram pure. Because this ashram is established and it is run based on the philanthropic support by the enlightenment seekers. People who are seeking enlightenment, people who are in the spiritual path, they donate for the well-being of this ashram. We are making it free so that there is a certain purity where money is discounted. Even though money is needed, we discount it for the seekers. That should not be a demotivation. So every month we have free retreats. Only once in a year we have paid retreats retreats because that's for a different purpose. Once in a year we have paid retreats. And that retreats, paid retreat is, it's not a paid per se, it's a donation-based retreat. And that donation-based retreat is for seekers of enlightenment to go deeply into themselves. It's a nine days, ten days retreat where there is a physical detox, there is an emotional detox, the menu, the diet is very catered, tailored. Only for them. So certain special provisions are being made once a year so that it supports the seekers of enlightenment so that they get, they get the taste of their own self. They, they get the taste of their own enlightenment. And when they go back to their own countries, they become teachers of this process. So the paid retreats once in a year are for seekers of enlightenment and also for the teachers of meditation. But other than that, the rest of the year, everything is free. Meditation is free. Workshops are free. Retreats are free. Everything is free to maintain the purity of this ashram. It is the wish of Patriji that this ashram should be the international headquarters of Maunagyan. And that is exactly for that reason I am here. 95% of the work is done. In another one month we will complete the 100% work. And this ashram is going to be a cell phone free zone. Any person, whether a visitor or a person who is staying for one month, two months, doesn't matter. The moment they enter the ashram, it's going to be a cell phone free zone. And it's going to be a plastic-free zone. So this is what we are doing it. Why we are doing it? Because silence, the practice of silence, is an essential aspect for enlightenment. Ramana Maharshi emphasized on silence. Jainism emphasizes a lot on silence. Every Every enlightened master emphasizes on silence. Because the more you go into silence, the more you can hear your soul speaking to you. The day you are practicing silence, your soul speaks to you through feelings. And that is called intuition. And your intuition will be crystal clear. Sometimes people say that I don't know whether it is my mind speaking or whether it is my heart speaking. Practice silence. Crystal clear. You will not have any doubts. Heart space guiding. 
if you're if you're having this doubt some people say whether i don't know whether it is my mind or my heart if you're having this doubt that means your mind is agitated when your mind is not agitated then the intuitions are crystal clear there is no doubts you can experiment this on the day of practicing silence your intuition becomes sharp so i have given five points to practice mauna you can practice at home but given an opportunity utilize the ashram space because the ashram helps you to go deep within the ashram is uh, an incubator it's a conducive space for you to go deep into silence throughout the year you practice silence at home at least once in a year you visit ashrams like this where it is very specifically the every brick in this ashram is built for the silence for the inner journey every tree is planted with the intention that this tree should radiate silence this this tree should help the seekers to go deep within every stone we lay every brick we place the intention is this should help the seekers to go within this should help the visitors of the ashram to get into deep silence so can you imagine how it is going to be every tree every plant every rock every brick is placed with this intention and of course we have a wonderful team who has the similar intention to serve unconditionally to all the visitors you might be a, a ordinary employee or you can be a high court judge or you can be an mla you can be a minister you can be a prime minister whoever you are you are treated the same you are offered the same food and the food is cooked with love and the people who cook they meditate first before they cook they enter the kitchen so every aspect of it is designed that way so once in a year you can use this opportunity to travel visit the ashram the rest of the time you can practice on your own so in this seven days journey we are going to learn a lot about ourselves 